our graduating seniors. And afterwards, for those of you who are able to stay or feel safe enough to stay, a potluck, the service committee providing the meat, bring a vegetable or dessert and join us for a potluck afterwards. Anything else? One joy. I counted up. 21 is what I came up with at the church yesterday for our cleanup day. Thank you for all of you who came and helped clean. Our preparation song today, God's Love. It's printed in your bulletin. We'll sing it through twice. It's just the chorus. God's love is warmer than the warmer sunshine, softer than a sigh. God's love is deeper than the deepest ocean, wider than the sky. God's love is brighter than the brightest star that shines in the night above. There is nothing in this world that can
sins together. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive our failure to follow in your footsteps, our failure to love as we have been loved. We are sinners standing in need of forgiveness. Hear our prayer and forgive our sins. believe the good news in Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. So turn to your neighbors and pass the peace of Christ, saying, the peace of Christ be with you. Young people, forward for our children's message. Others to be remembered, 
I'd like to uh, remember Meg's aunt passed away unexpectedly this week. So uh, remember the Bright Sprecher and Russet families. One of Meg's cousins also diagnosed this week. Is that yes. right, Todd? Yes. If we could remind me of that cousin's first name. Uh, Jessica. Jessica. We lift up Meg's family in our prayer. Bobby? Today is my and Sydney's wedding anniversary. We lift up Monty and Sydney Maines. Also keep them in special prayer on, on this Mother's Day as we remember their beautiful daughter. Monty and Sydney Maines, we lift them up. Okay? I think we need to pray for our president who will remember God in his prayer for our nation. We lift up our president, Joe Biden that he would remember the Lord in his prayers. Others today? Yeah, pray for my mom. Uh, she had a dialysis, but breathing uh, problem. She's not going to be For Mary Vasquez, in the nursing home here, a trip to the hospital, we pray that she might gain breath. And Jacob's mom out of the hospital, we celebrate that as a joy. And for Brandon, he'll get alcohol and I hope that Val has a friend who needs some help with a drinking problem. We lift this unnamed person up in our prayers. Others today that need to be remembered? Our uh, daughter is set a lot to have an anniversary on the 11th. She's your third anniversary. <coughs> and then Mark and I are the next day on the 12th. It'll be 37. <laughs> and to all the mothers, happy Mother's Day. Yes, a happy Mother's Day. We'll lift up Shelby, an expectant mother. And also her third wedding anniversary. For Mark and Lori, for all mothers. Thank you, Lori. Yeah. Others today? Yeah. A praise for the rain. I forgot to go out. My wife, Sandy, praise for her too. Yes, Sandy, who asked to remain married to me. We do <laughs> pray for Sandy. <laughs> Never neglect her. Thank you. <coughs> and I, I cherish rivals' prayers. Rod always tells me he prays for Sandy. So. Yeah, and you <coughs> Thank you. I was saving that one. Julie T is home. She and Savannah are now down with her other Savannah's other grandmother. But uh, I got to see Julie and celebrate with her. Uh, Julie wanted me to tell you all thank you so much for your continued prayers. She is not fully recovered yet, but wow, she is Julie, and we rejoice with that. Any others today? Yes, I forgot one of them. My sister-in-law has fallen and uh, broke her hip. Shirley? Shirley Harper. Shirley Harper with a broken hip. She told me that she broke her hip. Thank you. We will lift her up. And also, for all children separated from their parents on this Mother's Day, let us pray. <coughs> Lord God, we thank you this day for mothers, for parents, for children for graduating seniors, for those who are mourning 
the death of a child, the death of a mother, the death of a spouse, the death of an aunt, the death of someone they hold dear. Lord God, we lift up Meg Barker and all her family, lifting up also cousin Jessica. May your healing touch be upon the families involved. We lift up Ann and Connie Sawyer, who are both doing well. The Lord, give them strength. Give us all strength. We pray especially on this day for Monty and Sydney Maines as they celebrate an anniversary and mourn the death of a daughter. We pray for our president, Joe Biden. We pray for Mary Vasquez, for Jacob's mother. We give thanks for the rain. We lift up those unnamed persons who need help, Lord, as we all need help. We lift up Shirley Harper and celebrate with the Teague family that Julie is out of the hospital and rehab. Lord, be with her. Lord, in this time of togetherness, we pray for those who are separated from family for multiple reasons. Oh Lord, give them strength and fill them with your love. All these things we ask and pray through Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our meditation hymn, Happy the Home When God is There. Remain seated. 288.
between Mother's Day and Father's Day put gifts in a bottle to support the LC clinic. The session not meeting till Wednesday will act to approve that and then we can fill up baby bottles, use them to support the life care clinic if the session agrees. So, but either way, we lift up for our minute for mission today LC Clinic in Creston and other places. Three. Today's reading is from John 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. I was looking through some articles on parenting this week. You never get too old to learn new things about being a parent because your children's needs just seem to keep on changing. Anyway, I came across an article entitled, Five Reasons Parents Should Not Be Friends with Their Children. That caught my attention. Written by a man named John <coughs> Roseman, who in his writing often expresses the opinion that parents who try too hard to be friends with their children end up being poor parents who fail to provide the things their children really need. John gave five reasons why parents should not try to form friendships with their children. But as I read the article, I realized that John Rosemont was using a much different definition of friendship than the one that Jesus used in our gospel for this morning. In Rosemont's view, Parents can't be friends because then they give up control in order to make their children happy. They're unable to hold their children accountable because they want to be liked rather than respected. One cannot be both a friend and disciplinarian, Roseman argues, and a friend can't really ask another friend to do anything that's tough or difficult because that might threaten the relationship. Contrast that with what Jesus says about friendship in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. In the verses just after Christie read, Jesus said, You are my friends if you do what I command you. He adds, I don't call you servants any longer because servants don't know what the Master is doing. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I heard from my Father. So what is this command that Jesus gave us that if we keep it we become Jesus' friends? Love one another as I have loved you. And what is it that Jesus heard from the Father and passes on to the disciples? that those who keep God's commands and abide in God's love will bear much fruit and find complete joy. From Jesus' point of view, friendship is based not on getting someone to like you or doing things to make the other person happy. Friendship is based on your willingness to lay down your life. Not out of obligation or desire to be a martyr, but out of love. Greater love has no one than this, Jesus said, than to lay down your life for a friend. Now, today is Mother's Day, and to use a modern term I don't fully understand, I'm getting woke to the fact that Mother's Day is a difficult 
day for some. For some who are grieving the death of a child. For those who are still grieving the death of a mother. For women who feel as if society only honors women who are mothers and nobody else. For those who, for one reason or another, have not become mothers. For mothers separated from their children, children separated from their mothers. If that describes you or someone you love, please know I'm not trying to rub salt in your wound by preaching a Mother's Day focused sermon. But I can't ignore the fact that when it comes to unconditional love, it's mothers who set the tone. Whenever I try to think of how I can love better, my mind goes to my grandmothers, to my mother, and to my wife, all of who have demonstrated laying down love to me. Laying down love. I'm not wild about that expression, but it's based on what Jesus says true love is. Willing to lay down your life for another person. Growing up, I didn't think of all the ways my mother laid down her life for me. Not just talking about cooking meals and washing my clothes and making sure I got places on time, proofreading my school papers, but those were some of the things she did. But I'm talking about my mother continually laying aside what she wanted to do. Things that might have given her more happiness and joy to take care of my needs or the needs of my two brothers and sister. Plus, my mother was a great friend to me. Without really trying to be a great friend, I think, but she knew how and when to listen. She knew the right questions to ask me, though I rarely answered them aloud. The questions that would force me to think about things in a new way. My mother continually laid down her life for me, and not just for me and my siblings, but for my friends. You know, one thing I've always appreciated about mothers, many of them were willing to be mothers to children they didn't bear. I think about the other second mothers that have blessed my life through the years, Kitty and Rosie and Charlotte and Virginia and Phyllis and EA and Inez and Josephine and Opal and many, many more, many of you and many, many who have gone on to be with the Lord. Think about in your own life all the people who have served as mothers to you, who have taken care of your needs, who have laid down their life for you. When I think, too, of laying down love, I think of my wife, Sandy, who nearly every night actually lay, lied down in the bed with our daughters to help them be comforted when it was time to go to sleep. Simple ways that we demonstrate love. God is like that. God's love is like a mother's love, where God comforts us and is always there in our times of need. Sandy was always there for our girls and is still always there for them. Now, I'm not trying to pick a quarrel with John Roseman, but if there are five reasons that parents should not try to be friends with their children, I think there are ten reasons why parents should try to be friends with their children. God-centered friends who are willing to lay down their lives in multiple ways for their children and for their children's friends. Children of all ages need to know that there are people in the world willing to love them through thick and thin, willing to lay down their lives willingly. You know, it's become cliche to say, you don't get to choose your relatives. And that includes your parents. But it's also true that you don't get to choose all your friends, including the one who promises to be your best friend, Jesus. 
That's right. In the verses after Christy read, Jesus said, You did not choose me. I chose you. And this is my commandment, that you love one another. I think Jesus is trying to remind us that our love grows out of God's love for us. That whenever we choose to love God or others, we choose because God has already loved us and enables us to love. We need to learn to love all people as good mothers love their children. Once upon a time in my life, I worked with youth who had been labeled juvenile delinquents, who were housed in lockup cells in a jail called the Youth Detention Center of Trenton, New Jersey. Most of them had broken the law so many times that law enforcement officers, probation officers, judges, and most of the members of their family had given up on them, run out of patience and sympathy. And though they were allowed multiple visitors several times a week, most of those juvenile delinquents had only one visitor that came regularly. And 90% of the time, that one visitor was the mother. God is like the mother of a delinquent child who will not give up on his children, who keeps on loving us no matter how far we stray from the straight and narrow, no matter how often we break the commandments, God loves us and tries to bring us back. For God's love is unconditional, and God calls us to love one another with unconditional love. On this Mother's Day, let us love one another as our Mother God has loved us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, as you were loved by your mother, so we are loved by you. By Almighty God, by our own mothers and mother figures, we thank you for the love we have experienced in life. Now help us to show that love to others, especially to those who feel unloved. Help us to be as loving to others as you are to us. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn, hymn number 61, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Stand as we sing together.
love one another as God and Jesus Christ has loved you. And God's blessings be upon you now and always. Amen.